never do it. Police headquarters. Oh, yes, Dylan. I'll notify Dick Tracy at once. Calling car 15. Calling car 15. Car 15. Car 15, Patton speaking. Contact Dick Tracy at once. Have him go to the flawless fur warehouse. Dylan reports some shenanigans. Busted fuse box in the garage. Then tell him to call... Then tell him to call an electrician, not Dick Tracy. Now, wait a minute, Pat. The night watchman's disappeared. It might be homicide. Oh, that's different. I'll tell Tracy right away. Uh, Roger. Pennies for a blind old man. Pennies for a blind old man. Hello, sightless. Hi, Pat. Is it a nice night? Lovely night, lovely Thank night. Thank you very much. Hey, Jigger, come here. Well, what's on your mind, copper? Where's Tracy? In the back room, snooping around. Say, why don't you bloodhounds hold your convention someplace else? We like the atmosphere around here. It's so wholesome. Looking for me, Pat? Yeah, we have to make a call. Oh. You find out what you're looking for, Tracy? No. And see that I don't. I understand Hatchet Harry's been hanging around here. Why, that's a big mistake. Say, you know I run a respectable joint. Do I? Come on, Pat. Come back again, Mr. Tracy. Bring the folks. <laughs> Pennies for a blind old man. Sightless, I want you to do me a favor. What is it, Mr. Tracy? I want to know what's going on in Jigger's back room. Mr. Tracy, you know I can't see a thing. Now, to keep your eyes open, will you? Five bucks. He put that coffee on while I was in here. Ten minutes later, when I came back, the coffee was boiling over, the lights were out, and there was no hope. Did this watchman ever leave the job before? No, I'm sure of that, because he was a most reliable man. That's why I'm afraid something happened to him. What did you do after you called headquarters? I called Mr. Humphreys. He's the owner of the place here, because all the doors were unlocked. Did you take a look around inside? No, I, I thought we'd best wait when Mr. Humphreys came. Let's see what happened to the lights. Those fuses were yanked out on purpose. See if you can pick some up, Pat, so we can have some light. All right. Well, you gave me a scare. 
I guess everything's all right. There's a fortune and furs in that vault tonight. It is Detective Tracy from headquarters. You better take a look inside, Mr. Humphreys. I'd rather wait to open the vault. You see, when Officer Dillon phoned me, I reported his call to my insurance company, and uh, their representatives are going to meet me here. We're here, Humphreys. This is Mr. Tracy of police headquarters. How are you? I'm Peter Premium, vice president of the Honesty Insurance Company. This is Mr. Cudd, my investigator. He's not just from headquarters. That's Dick Tracy, homicide. That's right. Say, Dick, I think I'll go out to the car and see if I can get a radio pickup on that night watchman. Okay, Pat. May I have the combination now, Mr. Humphreys? Certainly. out and the ink is hardly dry on your policy. God, I want a thorough investigation of this. So do I. I've never had a robbery before. It's a strange coincidence that as soon as I switch insurance to the honesty company, I have one. Are you insinuating that I... Well, wait a minute. Move your foot. Looks like we got robbery and you got your homicide. Mr. Humphreys, may I have an inventory of your loss with a detailed description of each item? We can give you that. There's something wrong about the washroom being slugged or killed inside the vault. Something sour about the whole business. How many of your employees know the combination of the vault, Mr. Humphreys? None of them. Oh, Dick, Dick, I got a radio report. The night watchman's turned up. Where is he? They've got him down at the morgue. He's dead. I'd better go with him. I'll check for you later. The medical examiner told us not to move him until you got here, Mr. Tracy. I see. Is that him, Cud? Yeah, that's the night watchman, all right. Where was the body found? On Macy near Grand, apparently thrown out of a car. Did that kill him? I know he was dead when he was tossed out. He was killed by a vicious blow that split his skull. As you can see, it's pretty ugly. Hmm, looks like he'd been hacked with a cleaver. I don't think so. A cleaver wouldn't tear the flesh like that. Well, it's a cinch, it's not a bullet or a knife wound. Here's what he had on him. Hasn't been fired. Well, poor fellow never had a chance to use it. Well, there's not much here. Hey, there's writing on it. What? Well, it isn't very clear. What do you make of it? Offhand, Greek. I'd say it looks like, uh, like, uh... Like what, Pat? Like scribbling. We'll take a closer look at this in the laboratory. Thank you very much, Bill. When I photographed this, I darkened all the letters so it would be reproduced more easily. Now we take the first word. First letter is D, second letter is an A, and the last letter is definitely Y. Now in between, it could be an N. Well, it could be anything. Does Danny mean anything to you? Not yet. D, A, I, could be an S, Y, could be Daisy. Now let's take a look at the next word. T-H-R-U. True. The next one is easy. It's got to be of. And the last one definitely is T-H-E-N, or that could be an M, them. It can't be through of them. It must be three of them. Hawks must have been trying to tell us that three men did the job. Well, we'd only figure out this first word. D-A-I-S-Y. Daisies. Three of them. Three daisies. Now we're getting into poetry. This last scribbling looks like a license plate number. Six, seven, no, that could be a T, you see? Mm -hmm. Six T N two something something. Whenever there's a T in a license plate number, a it truck. Is. You're right, Pat. And maybe he meant there were three daisies on a truck. No, he would have written three daisies. Daisy and three of them indicate two separate ideas. I think Daisy was the name on the truck. Then there were three guys driving it. Yes, I think that's it. Now, let me have that, will you? Well, certainly. Thank you very much, Collins. Johnson, put this on the air right away. Get it out to all cars. Yes, Mr. Tracy. Calling all cars. Calling all cars. Be on the lookout for a truck marked Daisy, driven by three men. 
License plate number 6TN2, blank, blank. Wanted for robbery and murder. Go take care of that sign. Right. Tell you beggars aren't permitted in here. How many times do I got to tell you I ain't no beggar? I'm a merchant. Well, what are you doing in here, merchant? Uh, I'm looking for two customers of mine. Uh, well, can you show them to me? Uh, no, I... Well, then they're not here. Come on. Hey, wait a minute. That's a funny one. It gives me the jitters, too. I want my door, and I want it quick. I want to blow this town. It ain't ready yet. Would you stop playing with that cat so I can talk to you? Well, uh, talk. Cat don't mind. Oh, you're such a smart character, ain't you? You couldn't just hit that night watchman over the head, could you? You had to get fancy and tear him up. Now the whole homicide squad's on our tail. Can't the boss get rid of the stuff? Nobody will touch it now. At first, a bad enough, but he's got to tie him up with a murder. We'll never get out, though, now, never. All because of you and that itchy hangnail. You can't use your brains, can you? Instead of your brains, you gotta use that hunk of steel like, like some stupid animal. I know what's the matter with you. You're a killer, Claw. You're nothing but a crazy, stupid killer! Somebody who's interested. Wants to see the furs tonight. There, you see, Sam? We're going to get our dough after all. When are you going? That'll be at the end of Hemp Street in an hour. Someone in the alley. I was only going to... Leave it there.
please, mister. Please. I didn't do nothing. Please, mister. Let me in, somebody. Please let me in. Yeah, what's going on out here? You gotta let me in there, mister. No one's allowed in here. Beat it. But, mister, somebody's gonna kill me, I swear. He's right down there. Now, look, old man, you're drunk and I'm busy, so no. beat it, would you? No, 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 beat it. No, but I tell you, he's there somewhere, mister. Please let me, let me in, please let me in, mister. Still hanging around? I was just going, mister. I'm gonna stay right here till you do. Oh, that'll be fine. Thanks, mister. Thanks. Stick around, I'll be right out. Okay. Soft now, the fair Ophelia. Nymph in thy orisons be all my sins remembered. No, no, Vitamin, not like that. No? My dear Tess, after 49 years in the theater, you're telling me. Well, Dick probably forgot his key. You let him in, Vitamin, but don't tell him I'm here. Something tells me this is what you've been waiting for. Uh, oh, well. Oh, ye gods, what have we here? Where's Mr. Tracy? Mr. Tracy buys his fresh fruit from a dependable dealer. Thank you. But I've got to see him. It's important. Uh, you shall not cross this threshold until you've been thoroughly disinfected. Take your ridiculous presence elsewhere. But, mister, you don't understand. I've been through enough tonight. Well, you're not going through here. But look, mister, tell him it's about the thirst. They're going to meet the fence at the end of Hen Street in a half an hour. <sighs> I wonder what that cab was doing here. Must have brought Tess. She said she'd be over tonight. But Vitamin, he might have been important. What importance could Dick Tracy possibly attach to an impecunious peddler? Oh, Dick, at last. Hello, Pat. Hello. Sorry to be late, Tess. How long have you been here? Three acts of Hamlet, going on four. Greetings from the melancholy Dane. Just in time for Miss Soliloquat. Before you go into that, Vitamin, who was in that cab that just left here? Oh, merely a person of uh, no consequence. Vitamin said he was a peddler. Yes, a peddler with a most grandiloquent name. Uh, visionary, I believe he called himself. Visionary? Could it have been Sightless? Did Sightless stop by here? Stop by? He practically stormed the gates like a Trojan army of 12. <laughs> but I held the fortress, didn't I, Tess? <laughs> Look, Vitamin, Sightless is no ordinary peddler. That is your opinion. What did he say? Why, I made a point of forgetting it immediately. Look, Vitamin Sightless wouldn't have come here if it hadn't been important. What did he say? Well, in a quaint language all his own, uh, I believe he mentioned something about uh, something that was going to happen at the end of some street in some uh, half an hour. Oh, that's great. What was going to happen? I think he said somebody was going to build a fence there. Build a fence? Fence. Maybe it has some connection with the furs. Mm, yeah, yes, yes. He said something about furs, too. Vitamin Sightless said somebody was going to meet a fence, didn't he? <laughs> I suppose that makes sense. It certainly does. Now look, try to remember. At the end of what street did he say? Let me think. Let me meditate. Ah, uh, methinks he said it was at the end of, um, 
Flax Street? There's no such street. Well, something like Flax. Uh, rope, uh, flannel, crepe de chine. That's Gabardine. Rope. Flax. Could it have been Hemp Street? Hemp Street? That's more like it. Oh. Hemp, flax, no rope by any other name would smell. Vitamin C, the test gets home all right, will you? Enchanted. I'll see you later. Come on, Pat. shot Lily. So she's in the fencing business. Do we surprise her? No, not yet. What we're interested in is who's going to meet her. Hey, she's not going to wait. Dick Tracy. You're not running out on your date on my account, are you? Do you think I make dates on street corners? I, I just stop for a moment to light a cigarette. Is there a law against it? No, I guess there isn't. Then I'll be on my way, if you don't mind. Could I give you a lift? No, thanks. I'll give you one. Pat, you can drive Lily's car. She's coming with me. Right. Come on. What are you trying to pull, Tracy? You can't treat me like a criminal. I'm a lady. A lady with a date. Who are you going to see, Lily? Nobody. I told you I had no date. Well, you have one now. Let's go. What were you doing on Hemp Street? I told you. I was on my way home. I stopped for a few minutes to have a cigarette. I never could do two things at the same time. Then why were you so startled when you saw me? Force of habit, I guess. Every time I see a cop, I want to get out of his way. Look, Lily, you and I both know what you were doing there. What's wrong with parking on Hemp Street? Ordinarily, nothing. The two people were to meet there tonight about a little matter of hot furs. Somebody was going to buy them from somebody who had them to sell. I'm not interested in furs. I've got all I need. And anyway, what would I buy them with, that $60 you've got in your hand? Lily, did you lose anything tonight? No. Well, then I'm a rich man. Look what I found. $20,000 stuffed under the front seat of her car. Is it yours, Lily? Certainly it's mine. I, I want it in a poker game tonight. Hmm, some game. You're barking up the wrong tree, Tracy. I'm no grifter. Poker, yes. The race is sure. Long shot Lily, that's me. Gambling's my dish, not fur robberies. Okay, Lily. But you'll have to tell me who lost the $20,000. And also, who was in the game? I'll tell you that. Maybe, on the witness stand. We'll give Lily a chance on the witness stand. Put her on suspicion of murder. Murder? Oh, you're bluffing, Tracy. Not a bluff, Lily. A watchman was killed during a robbery tonight. You can't pin a murder rap on me. Then start talking. All right, all right. I'll tell you what happened. Some guy called me tonight and asked me if I'd be interested in some hot fur, dirt cheap. I said yes. He said he'd call me back later, so I waited. And you called him back? You don't catch me on that one, Tracy. I don't know the guy, so I don't have his number. He called me back. He said to show up at Hemp Street with the dough. Somebody meet me there. Somebody did meet me there, all right. The rest is history. Who was it called you, Lily? He didn't take the trouble to introduce himself. Who was it? I swear, Tracy, I don't... Look, Lily, you're in enough trouble without shielding a murderer. Who was it? You've got to believe me, Tracy. You've got to. The guy was an absolute stranger. I don't know how he happened to call me, but he did. I've got a reputation. I play long shots. Even you know that. I take big chances. People know it. It, it gets around. Lots of guys know about me, but I don't know about them. That guy could have been anybody. Anybody. Believe me, Tracy. I don't know who it was. I swear I don't. Turn this over to the property clerk. Holder is a material witness. This way, please.
You know something, Dick? I don't think she's lying. Maybe not. I'll have sight. Let's take a look at her. Anyway, we'll have to find out from him who was in that back room. Tracy? No. Just brought back something that belongs to you. No. Take them. They're yours. They're your trademark, Cypress. Thanks, thanks. I found them in the alley back in the Blinken No, no, scroll. no, I wasn't there. You had to tell them, didn't you? No. You had to stole it. No, Tracy. I didn't see them. I... Gone, poor guy, just like Hawks. I didn't see anyone come out as we drove up. Then there's a chance we've got him trapped in the building. I'll call headquarters and have the block surrounded. You suppose he was making a phone call when we drove up? Could be. like that. He slugged me. If you weren't my friend, I'd say you had it coming to you. Why didn't you wait until we had the block surrounded? You know, I was just wondering that myself. Anyway, I winged him, and I know now what he used to kill Hawks and Sightless. I was coming Tell up the Tell me about stairs. it on the way down. He has no right hand. There's an iron hook attached to his forearm, and that's his weapon. I saw it, and I felt it. Maybe you're right. Come on, I want to show you something. Look at these scratches. They're brand new, aren't they? Say, he uses that hook for everything, doesn't he? Must have been an important call or he would never have stopped to use this phone. You're right. As a reward for your good work tonight, I'm going to give you a nice, safe job. Finding out who he was calling. You mean me? That's right. I'll explain it headquarters. I'll tell you what these scratches give us, Pat. What's the first thing you do when you dial a telephone number? Why, I, uh, look for a nickel. Oh, no, no. Oh, Pat. I dial the exchange. That's right. You dial the first two letters of the exchange. Now, these scratches appear only in the first two holes. I get it, Dick. The exchange the killer was dialing has got to be here. Correct. In checking a list of exchanges, 
you'll find there's only one exchange with a combination of these letters. B.A. for Banny. But what about these other two scratches? That's even simpler. Since they appear in the first hole, the killer can only have been dialing the number one twice. Then we know the number the killer started to dial is banning one, one, something, something. Now all we have to do is find the complete number and we'll know who the killer was trying to call. But there's lots of telephone numbers that start that way. I know. A dozens, maybe. Sure. Maybe even as many as a hundred. Mm -hmm. And that's why I'm giving you the job, Pat, of finding the exact number. You mean you want me to call every number starting with BA11? Now look, Dick. Get to your desk, Pat, and start in. But Dick, who do I say is calling and who am I supposed to be? A guy's got to know those things. I can't just walk into something blind. Find anything, Donovan? I think this is it, Mr. Tracy. Yeah, that looks like LeBert, all right. Mm-hmm. According to this, he hasn't been around since bootleg days. He used to be a hijacker. Coast Guard cut around him. He lost his right hand and crippled his right leg. Yep, that's him. He did a stretch in the pen. Only been out about six months. Calls himself a lot of things. But his most popular name is the Claw. Well, Pat, I guess that's the answer to your question. Yep. Shall we send out a pickup on him? No, not yet anyway. The Claw isn't in this alone. Furs aren't in his line. He wouldn't know how to dispose of them. Any idea who the higher up is? I'm depending on Pat to tell me that. You mean you want me to imitate this guy? Use your deepest baritone, Miss Patton. Here's your telephone. Now, I guess you're all set. This is the claw speaking. No, no, no. This is the, the this is Pat. Hmm. <clears throat> this is the claw speaking. See that he keeps that pitch, Donovan. Right. Now let me know the minute you get results. Here, Dick. I mean, uh, Gotcha, boss. Hello. Tess. Dick, Vitamin's grieving dreadfully. I feel that you ought to speak to him. What's the matter with him? Well, his conscience. The news about sightless came over the radio and... Well, dear, I told him that we all felt bad about it, but take a look for yourself. Snap out of it, Vitamin. It's true, you did send Sightless away from the house, but you don't... If I hadn't, he'd still be alive. The solution to your entire dilemma was on the lips of that peddler, and I silenced them forever. Now I needs must atone for me crime. But, Vitamin, there's nothing you can do now. Nothing? There's nothing so difficult to do as... nothing. What is it, Dick? Vitamin, there is something you can do. But I don't know what he... But to me, no but, sir. Put me to the test. Hello? This is the claw speaking. I quit, wise guy. What did they say this time? This is the claw, eh? Then go scratch yourself. <laughs> Insults. That's all I get. A man in my position. Uh-uh, uh-uh, uh-uh. I'm sorry, Pat. You're in my custody. Orders from the chief. He just called. Where was he calling from? Home in bed? No, he's on his way to Humphreys. What do I care where he was on his way to? Well, that's so as you'll know where to report to him after you've located his man. Then ask him where he'll be a year from Thursday. Let's see, where was I? Oh, Tracy. Good evening, Mr. Humphreys. I hope it's not too late for a call. Certainly not. Come in. Thank you. Sit down, Mr. Tracy. I, uh... Suppose if you had any good news, I wouldn't have to ask you. That's right. I had hoped to recover your furs tonight, but something went wrong. You mean they're still in the city? I'm sure of it. And we hope to get them back for you shortly. <laughs> Please don't take offense at this, Tracy, but tell me frankly. Did Premium ask you to come over here and tell me that? No, why should he? Well, tonight the period of grace for the insurance company expires and they have to produce either the furs or the money. You think they'll stall on their settlement? It was just an idea. What I really wanted to ask you was, how long has it been since the combination was changed on your vault? The insurance company insisted on it being changed when they wrote the policy. Who actually made the change? I don't know. Uh, Cud brought a serviceman over with him. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Humphrey. Yes, sir. I hope to have some news for you soon. Okay. And the same to you, with many unhappy returns. Dick just called again. He seems disappointed with you. I'm not too happy about him, either. Hello? Hello, this is the Claw speaking. About time you called. Hey, hey! 
Oh, he knows me. What number did you call? I don't know. I'll have it traced. Keep talking. Oh, oh, oh. What do I say? What do I talk about? Furs, women, anything. Furs, women, anything. <laughs> yeah, I'm still on the line, boss. Well, you see, I, I, I couldn't, boss. I ran into a little trouble. Donovan, Donovan, he hung up. What number did you dial? I don't know. Well, think, think. I can't think. You can't think. No, no. Fine, fine, fine. Tracy. Hello, Cud. Who is it? I'm Tracy, remember me? I found your corridor door open, so I walked right in. Keeping rather unusual business hours, aren't you? You find out anything? Did you know that somebody changed the combination on Humphrey's vault shortly before the robbery? Mm-hmm. One of the conditions under which we wrote the policy. It's not unusual. It should be done periodically anyway. Do you know the new combination? I do. I went with the serviceman that did the job. Do you know it too, Mr. Premium? Yes, as a matter of fact, I do. Say, what are you driving at, Tracy? Are you suggesting that Cud and I are in on this robbery? I'm not suggesting anything yet. But somebody provided the thieves with the combination on that vault. Shall I take it? No, I'll answer it. Hello? Yes? Oh, I can't go into that tonight. Have him call me back tomorrow. Is that the claw? Who's the claw? He's a two-time killer, and he's got Humphrey's furs. He tried to sell them to a fence, but something went wrong. Well, if you know who he is, why don't you arrest him? I don't know where he is. But as he failed in contacting the fence, I thought he might call you tonight and offer to sell the furs back at a big cut under their real value. Well, we did have such an idea, but we didn't know who had them. Tonight's our deadline. And if we don't get the furs back, we'll have to settle with Humphrey's. An experienced fur thief would know that. The claw has no experience with furs. But the man behind him has. Pat! Pat, what in the world happened to you? I've got it, Dick, I've got it. You've got what? The man higher up. Banning 1126. Well, who is it? Humphreys. Well, how do you like that? The guy figures to collect $100,000 on his policy and still have his furs. Are you sure of this, Tracy? I'm sure. And I've got a crooked finger to prove it. It adds up, Cud. Humphreys is counting on you buying back the furs tonight. Sure. He gets his furs back in the morning, plus his cut of the dough we pay to get him back. Then, Tracy, why don't you do something? Why don't you lock him up? No, let me get my hands on him. By locking him up now, you risk losing your furs. And we might never catch the killer. But Humphreys can tell us where the furs are hidden. Don't you think he'll deny his connection with the crime? That means a trial giving the killer more time than ever to skip town with the furs. That sounds reasonable. Well, then what do we do? You and I are going to stick right here. I'm more certain than ever now that the killer will give you a call tonight. You and Pat pay Humphreys a friendly little call. Right. I think I'm going to enjoy this. You know, Tracy, I got to admit it. I'm kind of glad you dropped in here tonight. No, he ain't in. That's funny. You're supposed to make a very important call for me tonight. Why, Cud, I didn't expect to see you here tonight. Any news about the furs? Plenty. Oh, Humphreys. One of the first rules of our company is to always keep our clients covered. Well, I don't know what you mean. Step inside. Just a minute, now. Here. 
Glenn, he's got to be here somewhere. Hey, he's here. He's drunk. Tell me, Steve. He's not drunk. He's been hurt. Well, looks like he had another tattoo mark to his collection. Is he dead? Just about. Hey, it looked to me like he had time to call the insurance company. Maybe we ought to help him. I've had some experience sniping out bullets. But well, why waste the time? Look, we're, we're the perfect setup here. It'll be twice as much going at first if we call the insurance company. Just you and me. Yeah, but what's going to happen when he finds out we double-crossed him? Yeah, by that time, we'll be seeing the world. Come on. Cats Maybe your hunch was wrong, Tracy. There could have been a flip up somewhere. Hello? Is this the Honesty Insurance Company? Yes. Yeah, who am I speaking of? Peter Premium. Who's this? Never mind who this is. Look, how'd you like to get them Humphrey first back tonight, huh? All right, listen carefully. $50,000 back in the blanket skull in half an hour. Come by yourself. $50,000. Back of the blinking skull. And I'm warning you, no cops. I understand. No cops. What do you know about that? Back of the blinking skull. Are you going, Tracy? Alone? You heard what the man said. No cops. Good luck. Buy a pencil from a poor blind man. Buy a pencil from a poor blind man. Buy a pencil from... Pretty, a random shekel for a myopic mendicant. Peasant. Ye gods, tis now the very witching time of night. But not a suspicious character in sight. Methinks I have failed, Dick Tracy. Hey, that's right. Look. What? Sightless. What's the matter with you? You believe in ghosts? Come on. Yeah, but... I said come on. Hey. Buy a pencil from a poor blind man. I'm expecting someone to show in about 15 minutes. Let him in. And no one else. Okay, Sam. Good night, most profound apology. On your way, brother. We got to draw the line somewhere. There's no moochers. That epithet is applicable only to him who is afflicted with impecuniosity. Come again? Come again? I haven't left. There, keeper of the hooch. Okay, name it. Fetch me something savory and salubrious, uh, concocted perhaps from citrus grown in the gardens of Granada, chilled by the snows of San Marita, uh, served in a chalice by Chilini. Sorry, Bob, we ain't got any. In language comporting with your intelligence, Lemonade. Lemonade? Dear me, doesn't anyone understand English anymore? Come on, smile, kid. Smile. 
Another few minutes, you and me is gonna be 50 grand rich. Jiggy, take a look at that. He's pretty good with that things. I'll be all right. I, I think you ought to take him to see, Jiggy. Okay. I gotta stick around. You can't go around like that. I've done it before. I think Sam is right. You ought to have that looked after. You guys sound like you're trying to get rid of me. Oh, no. No, you're wrong. Sure act like maybe a black cat ran across your path. You're wrong about me, Sam. Oh, I can't oh, say it. I had nothing to do with you. Get right the gun, Fred! I had nothing to do with you. He's on his way down. I'll take him to the junkyard on Primrose Street. We'll have a dough in a few minutes. And, uh, boss, uh, we'll only have to split it two ways. Fine, Claw. Fine. What's the matter? Anything wrong? No. Everything's swell, Claw. Everything's swell. It's a frame up! <laughs> Wait for this. Hey, Jigger, you lead the way. Lead the way where? Hey, you cops can't shove me around. I run a respectable joint. We'll talk that over in the back room. Get going. I know. I heard everything. Uh, the furs are in the junkyard on... On, uh, on Black Street. Uh, no, uh, on uh, Primrose Street. Why don't I make you police commissioner for this? Call headquarters and have them send a squad car. Aye, aye, sir. Hey, these pipes are hot, Tracy. You better get used to the heat, Jigger.
smell you there. Come out. I couldn't get that police commissioner's job for you, Vitamin. No? That's filled for a while. Ooh. This is to show our appreciation. Huh. Haven't you anything to say, Vitamin? For the first time in my life, uh, I'm speechless. You know, I think we should give you a badge more often. Oh, uh, fortunately, I happen to have a little speech of acceptance with me. Mm -hmm. My dear friends, cannons to right of them. Uh, Vitamin, I have a table reserved for us at a nearby restaurant. Suppose you say that speech until then. Oh, Dick, how nice dancing. Well, why not? Tracy, I'm glad you're still here. I just got a report on Hatchet Harry. What about him? One of our men spotted him in the freight yards. Sorry, Tess. Come on. Uh, well, Vitamin, you won't mind taking Tess to dinner for me, will you? Don't you need me? I think we can manage. Sometimes I wish I'd been born a super criminal. Why, my dear? Because then I might get to see something of Mr. Dick Tracy. Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs>